When I was a kid, and actually now that I'm an adult still, uh, I really like watching The Three Stooges. I think it's a guy thing. And The Three Stooges did a routine once in which they were supposedly going to honeymoon at Niagara Falls. It's an old vaudeville routine, I think, and it goes something like Niagara Falls. Slowly I turn, step by step, inch by inch. And anyway, ever since I saw that, I thought, yeah, it'd be really cool to go to Niagara Falls sometime. Well, so about a year ago, I was giving a talk at uh, uh, Buffalo State College, and I got a chance to go to Niagara Falls. And I saw the most absurd sign there. It was a comment, or it was a, an instructional sign on how much water goes over Niagara Falls in every second. And it said 150,000 gallons per second. And, you know, that's just a lot of water. But because it was really close to Canada, probably they felt an obligation to convert it to metric units. And the conversion factor from gallons to, met to liters, which is the metric unit of uh, volume, is that one gallon is equal to 3.7854 liters. And so if you make the conversion from gallons to seconds, as they did on this sign, it read 567,810 liters per second. Now, why did I think this was absurd? The reason why it's absurd is this number, 150,000, is probably not exactly 150,000 gallons. In other words, nobody stopped and collected every single drop of water that crossed Niagara Falls in one second and measured it and found that it was not 149,999 gallons or 150,001 gallon, but rather that they said, well, okay, it's about 150,000 gallons. And in that case, all of these zeros are really just placeholders. They're just there to, to um, make this number as big as it needs to be. In other words, to express it, it with uh, the arithmetic convention that we use. And that what they really probably meant to say was 150,000 gallons per second is the, the error is associated with this digit, with the five. So in other words, it might be as small as 140,000 gallons. It might be as much as 160,000. But they certainly didn't mean for this to say 150,000 in one gallon or 149,999 gallons. Okay, so once it was converted to metric, somehow it went from, from a number that wasn't real precise. It was only, uh, it was on the order of, you know, the error here is about 10,000 gallons to something that suddenly is down to on the order of 10 liters. And 10 liters of water is about uh, what's in your toilet tank. And so you know for a fact that nobody collected all the water in one second that was going over Niagara Falls and measured it to the precision of the amount of water that's in a toilet tank. And so what we have here is an absurd use of what we know, what we call significant figures. In other words, these zeros are placeholders. The real significance in the measurement is in the one and the five. And so this number, what we say is that it's expressed to two significant figures. And so when we make the conversion, we don't express, even though we know these numbers precisely. So in other words, this is a definition. This is a conversion factor. One gallon is exactly precisely 3.7854 liters. But we don't say that the amount of water that's going over Niagara Falls is this number. Because this number has two significant figures, what we're going to see is that the convention is that this number is similarly listed into two significant figures. And so the sign should have read, Five hundred and seventy thousand gallons, excuse me, five hundred and seventy thousand liters per second. Now, another way to understand what I'm talking about here is that suppose Bill Gates is worth thirty billion dollars. Um, thirty billion dollars is obviously an estimate. It's an estimate in the sense that we know that it's um, either either, so there's, there's a little bit of ambiguity here, either between 20 and 40 or between 29 and 31. But the point is, we could explicitly say that what that uncertainty is. But suppose I give him a dollar. Now, not that I've given him a dollar, but suppose I gave him a dollar. Does he now have 30 billion and one dollars? Well, the reality is that the 30 billion was an estimate to begin with. And so we can't say that he now has precisely 30 billion and one because there was an error associated with the 30 billion to begin with. There's no error associated with the one. I gave him one dollar. But because there was error associated with the original measurement of his worth, we have to take that into account when we add numbers or when we subtract them or when we multiply them that when we, or when we divide them. The point is, when we work with numbers that are measurements, there's always uncertainty in the measurement. And so when we manipulate those numbers, we have to be concerned about that 
uh, the convention associated with how we manipulate the numbers, and that's expressed here. All right, so what we talk about when we talk about significant figures are which numbers are really counting in in our expression and which ones are just placeholders. And the first thing to say is that all non-zero digits are always significant. So there are three significant figures in 8.95 and two significant figures, which I'll often call sig figs because that's just what scientists do, two significant figures in um, 0.016. Now, zeros between non-zero digits are also always significant. So 101.325 has six significant figures. So in other words, that zero is a significant figure. 2001 has four significant figures. So these zeros are also significant. Now, zeros at the beginning of the number are never significant. They indicate the position of the decimal point. So in other words, 0 0.003, so these are numbers that precede non-zero digits, and they're between the non-zero digits and the decimal point. These zeros are not significant. They're just placeholders. And so this has two significant figures, and this number here, 0 0.00113, has three significant figures. Now, zeros that fall at the end of a number and after the decimal point are always significant. So 0 0.00230, these zeros here are not significant because by rule three, these are numbers that are at the beginning of the number. But that zero is significant because remember when we're talking about implied error, 230 would be that this number is between 229 and 231. So having an extra figure, if you think back to the, the weight problem when I said 166 versus 166.0, number four will make perfect sense. Anyway, this has three significant figures, and point 18600 has five significant figures. And finally, for, room, for numbers that, contain a, uh, that do not contain a decimal point, the trailing zeros may or not be significant. So if we think about a number like 1,000, this could be 1,000 where that number is significant, or it could be that 1,000, only one of the digits is significant. So we have some ambiguity. And sometimes you'll see things like this, and you just won't know. Um, one of the conventions is to say that if we put a decimal point after the last zero, that makes all these digits significant. And if we don't put a decimal point, that means only the non-zero numbers are significant. So this one would be one sig fig, and this one would be four sig figs. Okay? So that's one convention. But obviously, there's some ambiguity here. When we talk about scientific notation, we'll come up with a way to write numbers like this that's absolutely perfectly crystal clear in which there's no ambiguity. So now when we're adding and subtracting numbers, the number of significant figures in the sum or the difference is given by the number with the fewest decimal places. So for instance, if we want to add these two numbers, then we get, if we punch this in our calculator, we'd get this number, 14.567, but then we have to round, and I'll talk about rounding more in a second, but we have to round it to the, nu to the number that has the fewest number of decimal places. So this top number has three decimal places, the bottom number has one decimal place, and so we round it to one decimal place, and that gives us 14.6. Similarly, when we subtract 9.701 minus 0 .03, if we punch it in our calculator, we would get this number, and then we round it to the number with the fewest number of decimal places. And this number has two decimal places. 0 0.03 has two decimal places. So this would be our correct answer. When we're multiplying, oh, excuse me, let's talk about rounding. Okay, so the rules for rounding are if the digit after the one you want to keep is less than 5, round down. So for instance, if we had a number 14.9362 and we wanted to round it to five significant figures, that means the number that we want to keep is the 6, and we have to decide whether or not we round it up or round it down. And the following number is a 2, and so we round it down to leave it as a 6 and throw away the 2. So that's the correct to five significant figures. If the digit after the one you want to keep is more than 5, we round up. So if we wanted to round the same number to four significant figures. Now we're worried about what to do with the three, and we look at the six, the number after the three, and since it's more than five, we round up. So this number to four significant figures is 14.94. So two more rules. If the digit after the one you want to keep is a five and there are any more digits, you round up. So in other words, 331.6752, if we want to round this to um, the five significant figures, we look at the five, and that's exactly a five, so then we have some ambiguity, but if there are any more digits, we round up. So in other words, we round this number up to 331.68. 
if the digit after the one you want to keep is five and there are no more digits or if all the other digits are zeros, then there's a little rule and this is not always used, it's a convention, but the convention is you round to the, so that the last significant figure is an even number. So 145, 1.45, you round it to 1.4 because there are no more digits after the 5 and 1.35 you would also round to 1.4 so you would round this number up to the next nearest even number and here you would round down to the next nearest even number to two significant figures. So that's just a rule and you just have to remember that these are the rules that you use for rounding. Okay, finally when we treat multiplication and division um, what you do is you keep the number of significant figures in the factor that has the fewest number of significant figures. So now we're not worried about decimal points. Decimal places, we're worried about significant figures. So if we multiply 19.1392 times 11.04, we'd get 2.211.296 uh, and a bunch of other numbers. And then we're going to round this to whichever number has, to the number of significant figures in whichever factor has the fewest significant figures. And 11.04 only has four significant figures, so we would round this to 211.3. And similarly, when we do division, 1 divided by 14.366, we'd get in our calculator 0 0.0696 and a bunch of other digits. And then we're going to round this to two significant figures because 1.0 has only two significant figures. And so we round it to 0 0.070. Remember, that 0 is just a, a placeholder, so that's not a significant figure. That's where we get our second significant figure, and of course, the 7 is a significant figure. Well, all of this is going to make a lot more sense when we start actually using this machinery in measurements, but these are just rules. This is how mathematicians and, oh, excuse me, how experimentalists deal with numbers. Because there are intrinsic errors associated with these measurements, we have to use um, a convention for dealing with precision, but it makes sense. Again, Niagara Falls, it couldn't have been that we knew the number of gallons going over the falls to that precise a number because the, the number from which it was derived, the 150,000 gallons per second, that was an estimate.